Hola, hola, hola. Buenas noches a todos. Soy Tasha de Tasha Spanish. And tonight, I cannot say, estamos aquí con otro episodio de Hablamos Español. Because it's Hablamos Coreano, Korean. Um, I was thrilled and excited and surprised. And it sounds so sad, but this is the purpose of programs like this to open everybody's eyes, even mine. Was surprised to find a, a melanated person from the U.S. who has learned Korean. And I am sure there are more of you all out there than I know. But like I said, this is we're opening eyes and minds. Um, so we have tonight Nathan Thornton. Thank you so much for joining us, Nathan. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. And I'm tell you guys right now, he's very patient because he's been getting to this <laughs> recording. Took some patience. So I appreciate it. Nathan is the, um, in addition to knowing Korean and learning Korean, um, he's the owner of Smarter Korean. So just in case you're interested um, in speaking the language, now you know you have a plug. You actually know where to go. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, normally, what you're going to do it tonight, but normally I have my guests speak. Um, in, in Espanol in the beginning, they introduce themselves and I can talk with them because we both speak Espanol. But tonight I will be just like the viewers, just like you viewers, because I don't know what you're going to say. <laughs> so, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I know like what the answer is ultimately, but I'm not I don't know the words mm -hmm. like at all. So anyway, let's let's see it. So, guys, Nathan's going to introduce himself. I'm going to ask him all these questions in English and he's going to respond in Korean. And then at the end, he's going to give the same introduction in English. So if you want to see if you know a little Korean or maybe you know some, I don't know. I don't know what you know. Test it out right now. Here we go, Nathan. Where are you from? I'm from the U.S. Nathan, what is your job or what are your jobs? Plural. Uh, 지금, uh, 지금 한국어 선생님이에요. 네. 한국어 선생님. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are your pastimes? Uh, 저희 취미는 딱히 없는데 저는 뭐 그냥 뭐 친구들이랑 뭐 놀고 가끔 책도 읽기도 하고 뭐 여행 가는 것도 되게 좋아해요 저는 근데 딱히 없어요 지민. 딱히. <웃음> I heard 딱히요 somewhere in there and I heard toy and you're too old to play with toys so that's not what you're saying as a pastime. Um, okay, thank you. Tell us about your family. Whether you have a, a family of like your own that you created or just a family you come from. 저희 가족은 다. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt you. What's toy? I heard that I am or 저희, I have toy. Uh, Choi is like uh, my hour. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, keep going. Sorry. Choi, uh, Choi, uh, LA, Los Angeles, so, Chigun, uh, Sayago, Kesugu, uh, Choi, Kajogun, Uri, Aboji, Omoni, Kribu, Chon, Wedong, Aduri, Wedong, Adri. Yeah, okay. What's Uri? I heard Uri. Uri is our. Okay. <laughs> Didn't you just say Choi was like, or you said so Choi was mine? In Korean, there's two different hours. There's uh, a really formal one, and then there's another one. Sounds um, like Spanish with tu and usted and tu and su and tu yo and su yo. Okay. I can connect to that much. <laughs> Next. This is the last one out of the introduction. Your favorite Korean song or Korean singer? Favorite song or favorite Korean singer? Oh, uh, 제가 제일 좋아하는 한국 가사 가수는 어, uh, 음, 글쎄요. 어, uh, 저는 김범수. 김범수 되게 좋아해요. 네, 김범수. I could tell you were thinking. You said something, and then you were like, mm, or maybe it's this. 네, and then 맞아. you made a decision I, yeah, like it's Kim. Right. It's Kim. <laughs> <the end. laughs> That's probably how people feel when I speak Spanish and they don't know. <laughs> I don't speak Spanish, so. I haven't felt this way in a long time, but that's okay. Like I said, it's opening eyes and minds, even mine. Okay, here we go. That was great. Thank you, dear. So viewers, don't worry. He'll be explaining all of that in his English at the end. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm. All right. So 
um, I will be asking you some questions about your experience learning Korean. But then, of course, I'll also segue into Smarter Korean and, and the establishment of that business. So why did you decide to learn Korean of all languages? Um, well, basically, I when I was about 14 years old, uh, I'm originally from Los Angeles, California. And um, Los Angeles has the largest Korean population outside of Korea, actually. And so growing up in my neighborhood, it was predominantly um, uh, white people and Korean people. And about when I was 14 years old, there was a, a Korean school in my neighborhood that I wasn't even aware of, but I did have a Korean friend. She was an immigrant, um, very new from Korea. And we got close during school and she ended up telling me that she was going to this school, um, a Korean school now. And I was like, what? Korean school, what is that? And long story short, she told me, why don't you just come visit? I went and it was a private Korean school for Korean um, immigrants and for um, their children um, to go to, to continue their Korean education. And I went and I was just in awe of this completely different language. I had no idea about really, I knew about Korea, the country, but I had no real connection to the country or anything up until that point. And um, her family was really nice to me. And they um, just the culture just seemed really inviting from a very young age for me. And so I decided I want to go to this school. And I asked my parents if I could go. And they were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very honest response. You know, <laughs> is this not the movie well, response? That was honest. They were just, my parents are, they're, they're both black. Um, they're both American and they were just like, you want to go to a Korean school and you want us to pay for it? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, okay, let's hold on here. First, they were like a complete just flat out no. But then they were like, wait a minute, wait a minute. This actually could be good for him. Yeah. So they made a deal with me. They said, if we put you in this school, you can't leave until you um, are 18. You can't leave until we say you can leave. You can't just say, oh, I'm done with this. I want to do something else. They're like, you're gonna, you have to stay. So that was how it started. And yeah, that's, that's the beginning of the story. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. That's, that's, I guess it's the cool thing about living in cities like LA and, and other places where there's a lot of diversity. You yeah. connect to other worlds uh, at an earlier age. I'm here, I'm in Arkansas. And so we don't, we have a little bit of everybody, but that's the thing, a little bit. Okay. Not, you know, a sub substantial population of, of, of something that's not European American or African American and the Latino Americans or Latinos are, you know, really close in number as well. But that's beautiful. Let me ask you this. So it wasn't only for immigrants and their children. It, it was anybody, the school. It wasn't just so them. I was the only student in the entire school that was not actually um, Korean. So I'm not half Korean. I'm not full Korean. I was the only one that was literally zero Korean ancestry. Um, and the classes are in Korean. So the classes are in Korean and I arrived with no Korean and everyone was just like, what is he doing here? Like first people were like, okay, maybe, maybe his mom is Korean, maybe his grandma's Korean, somebody's Korean. But when I told them like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm me and I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, what? So walk, so walk me through a, just a little bit. Cause that's a that's an interview on its own. <laughs> but you here in, in Arkansas and probably most states, when we get students who are from other uh, cultures, like whether Spanish speaking country, and also we have a substantial Marshallese population here. So they you know. speak Marshallese. They usually go to an ESL class. English is a second language. They may have an assistant. They have. So were you given any aids or no? What, what, how did that, how did you even start to get acclimated a little bit? Did the school so, help? The, they put me in what they call like the, it's the class for Koreans who need help with their Korean. So that's what they started me off with. But the teacher was still a Korean woman. She was a wonderful woman, but she couldn't really speak English that well. Um, and so still the class was, it was meant to be, you know, a more um, slower, environment to learn Korean. Um, but at the same time, she was only speaking Korean. So one day she came to the class and she brought this old Korean book from like 1980. I like, I mean, it was falling apart. It was yellow and she handed it to me. 
and it was a Korean grammar book. And she just said to me, take this home and I want you to study it every single day. So that way you can catch up with everybody else. And that was all I had back then. I had this big old fat 1980s Korean book, like literally Republic of Korea, old te textbook in Korean. And that was, that was what I used to catch up. And every day I would come home. Um, so it was, a, it was a weekend school, but I would come home every day after normal school and Korean school. And what I mean? would... <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You still went to regular school. And then I went to Korean school on, on the weekends. Yeah, on this, the you were dedicated. I mean, I guess it's just, maybe that's just your personality type—a dedicated, committed child. Because what fourteen-year-old uh, is signing up for this? I like when I want something. I yeah, I, I'm the kind of person that goes after it. So, uh, I mean, I'm sure like, and I'm sure the, your parents push help, but <laughs> you were in school. So maybe not. I don't know, but seven days a week. Yeah, I was going to school, and I would wake up at seven in the morning on Saturday, take the yeah. bus and I would go, but I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And I'm not shaking my head. Like it's a problem. It's beautiful. I'm just in disbelief. That's all. That's all. <laughs> I mean, actually, honestly, sometimes I'm now as an adult, I think back and I'm like, I don't want to wake up on Saturdays now. I don't know how I was doing <laughs> that, that. That is beautiful. Like, you know, and now um, I'm sure everywhere, but most children wake up on Saturday, maybe not now, but for football games or basketball games or baseball, you were waking up to go to I Korean. Was Korean school. So let me ask you this then, because it was only weekend school. So yeah. why? Like, well, number one, does that mean the two other Korean children who were going there, they still had to go to U.S. school too? Yeah. Po babies, and so what? Legally, is it, it wasn't uh, you weren't able to get a diploma from only that school, or why is it necessary to go to both? Um, so it's you know it's voluntary. So the Korean parents made this school. Um, so they're actually all around. I went to the Southern Korean Institute of Southern California, or sorry, the Korean Institute of Southern California, not the Southern Institute. Um, and it's an established um, language school made by Korean immigrants themselves for. Um, to continue the Korean education wow. for their kids. And so these exist all over Los Angeles. Um, and there's even a, a, a kindergarten as well for this school um, in downtown LA. And it's completely, you know, in Korean. And there's Korean parents that uh, are on a waiting list for these schools even. So, yeah. yeah. That's nice. So it's like a for us, by us. Like they, they, knew they, they knew they were going to a different country, but they wanted to preserve their culture. They didn't want their children to get too uh, acclimated. That's not the word I'm looking for, but you know, when they lose themselves. So that's wonderful. That's good. Oh, so, yeah. so, it, so it was, every, so everybody that was going to school every day. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, you can imagine the other people in my school, they weren't really happy to be there. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't happy to be there. I was happy to be there, but they weren't. So. Well, no, I get it sometimes, and I kind of sort of a little bit. Um, but my experience has been being a a, a Spanish speaker, um, or you know, it, it was not my culture. So sometimes when something isn't yours, that makes you more attracted to it. Like, ooh, uh -huh. ah, you're in awe. Like, what is this? You know. But even now, you know, people who maybe are second, third generation here maybe have lost the Spanish language because it's like I come from it. So. Yeah, yeah, you know, let me just speak what everybody else to speak speaks. But me, I'm like, I want to know it all. Quiero saber todo. You know, exactly. <laughs> so I get it. That's, I get that's it. How I was, I was in history class in Korean. I was just like, I was excited. Everybody else was just like, can we, can we go home? <laughs> <laughs> so, how long do you think it take? It took from you getting that crusty book to really getting better. A year, six months. What, what do you think happened? Um, I would say. I didn't really start speaking, speaking Korean until I would say a year or two later. The first um, year or so was me really just trying to like soak everything up. Um, I was afraid to speak at school or with anybody Korean because I was afraid of being made fun of. And I was made fun of when I did open my mouth in the beginning. Um, so actually when I turned 15 um, that summer, I reached out at the time I was going to a church um, in Los Angeles, and I reached out to our sister church in um, in Seoul, South Korea, and I sent them this letter asking if I could come for the summer to live uh, with the Korean family. 
my parents didn't know about this. And when they finally, <laughs> when I got the yes, and I told my parents, uh, I want to go to Korea this summer, they were just like, what is going at, on? At 15. <laughs> at 15. Yeah, at 15. And I ended up um, like trying to raise money. And I asked my parents to sign, you know, the paper. So I could get on the plane at 15. And they were just oh. like, no, but okay. So my oh, mom, was, yeah, my mom was, she was a nervous wreck, but she was just like, okay, fine. So yeah, I got on the plane by myself, went to Korea when I was 15 and I was there for the summer. And after I came back that summer, cause I was only in Korean, like in Korea, but literally I was with the Korean family, no English. Um, I was at the time I was going to church in Korean and I was just left to do whatever I wanted when I was 15 um, in Korea. And I was making Korean friends and stuff and just speaking Korean all the time for the first time ever. So by the time I came back, um, my parents said I had completely changed and that um, <laughs> they don't know if they were, they made the right choice about me going uh, because <laughs> once I came back, I said, when I turn 18, I'm, I'm leaving to Korea. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, people, you made your own study abroad opportunity at 15 through writing a letter to a church. <laughs> this is amazing. Like, Oh, I'm not now. I get that your parents would be nervous, Rex, because I would be too. But yeah. overall, I, you sound like not half a bad child. Because I mean, ultimately, I guess in in the bigger scheme of things, what parent doesn't want a child that's self sufficient, that wants to learn, that wants to grow, that's a doer. You know, it wasn't like your mom had to knock on your room every day in the summer. Hey, stop playing the video games. No, you're in Korea. You know, <laughs> and then you raise money. You, I guess, you weren't begging them. Like, what fifteen year old is saying, "Oh, okay, I'm gonna find a way to get the money." What? <laughs> Woo, my mind is blown already. And this is just question number really one. Okay. Let me <laughs> <two more. laughs> now you answered some of these. How did you learn? Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go fast forward a little bit to now. How mm -hmm. do you keep the, the language fresh and sharp? Which I guess is answered with smarter Korean, but how do you keep the, the language uh fresh and sharp? If there's any um, other way. Yeah, I, I get asked a lot, like, oh, do you ever, like, forget Korean or, um, but the thing is, I think because I learned it when I was 14, I think I learned it just in time that, um, and because I was really in, like, an immersive environment, I, I, I think even now in English and Korean, I can't yeah. actually live without Korean. Um, yeah. It's really a part of my vocabulary, even my thinking, so... Um, like my closest friends and I, they're just like me. They're pretty international kids in some sense or some way, but they lived in Korea. So when we speak, we're constantly switching English, Korean, English, Korean. My best friend speaks English, Korean and Spanish fluently. So she's constantly swi switching between all different languages. And <laughs> so um, that's how I would say I keep it fresh because it's just a part of me now. And uh, obviously, yeah, with Smarter Korean, definitely helps speaking Korean daily with my students. So. Yeah, that is beautiful. And you have a, a sort, an assortment of friends that, that keep it uh, in the conversation. That's wonderful. And, and Korean uh, media. I still watch Korean TV shows. Uh, I love Korean movies. And that's always uh, the best way because that's also how I learned a lot of Korean was um, through the media in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Good. What was most difficult when you first started learning? Um, the beginning, I would say two things. One was how different Korean is to English. Um, my brain in the beginning was just like, what is happening with this language? Because Korean is completely opposite of English um, in regards to the, the grammar and the uh, sentence structure. It's literally opposite. Anything we do in English, opposite <laughs> in Korean. Um, and it's one of the hardest languages for English speakers in the world. I so believe it. It's just it's a whole just brain, yeah, <laughs> fart, honestly, in the beginning. Um, and the second thing that was really difficult, I think was the, honestly, I, I experienced quite a bit of pushback, um, a lot of racism in the beginning of learning Korean. This is um, very realistic, not yeah. a Disney story, yeah. So in the beginning, especially back then, uh, Korean wasn't as popular as it is now. And it, it just wasn't, it just wasn't the thing like it is now. And back then there was a lot of pushback from people 
um, like fellow Americans that I was, you know, growing up with, and as well as Korean Americans. There was a lot of just hostility towards me, um, being in spaces that I was not actually welcomed in. Yeah. And so this kind of triggered a lot of, um, like, oh, you know, maybe my Korean isn't going to be good enough, or maybe mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But then in the end, it actually made me think like, no, I'm going to prove you wrong that I can speak Korean and I'm going to do this. Um, yeah. And, yeah, so. Yeah. And I'm not trying to take you down bad memory lane, but no, no, no. Um, what made you, you, ultimately you're saying it, you want to prove them wrong. That's what made you stick with it. But was there ever a time you were like, yeah, they don't want me here. I don't want to learn a culture that doesn't want me in it. I'm out. Was there was there ever a time you were close to that? No, never, never. Um, I think because at the same time that I was dealing with certain people, both not Korean and non-Korean, that were really just like, why are you doing this? Why are you learning Korean? Why are you in this Korean school? Literally, I had experiences in my Korean school when I was walking around and people, they didn't know that I could speak Korean. So I'd be walking and people would say in Korean, like, why is a black person here? And stuff like this. And at the same time, I had really good Korean friends that were constantly teaching me how to handle these situations in Korean, how to handle, you know, different backlash from Korean people. And because of how welcoming and how so a lot of these friends that I had growing up were just so welcoming, like me into their families, it really made me feel actually closer to Korean um, instead of, you know, wanting to run away. So. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of the, the backlash, I meant to ask this earlier. Since you, maybe you weren't the first, I don't know. Are, do you know if you were the first uh, African-American, how do you want to word it, in the school? Do you know that? Yes, I was. Yeah. So you didn't have to get like, not because you were African-American, just because you weren't Korean really, but that as well. Like there was no board of directors. They didn't have to make a decision. It, oh, it was as simple as let's go sign him up. Okay, we'll take him. Yeah, yeah. They can't deny because you know it's a, it's a, it, it was a private school, but at the same time, you know, if as long as you pay the tuition, they they can't really deny you unless I was doing something horribly wrong in the school. Yeah, um, I actually became really close with the uh, the principal of my Korean school. She was a really wonderful woman. And um, she actually was always trying to look out for me. She, if she heard anything was going on, like if, if she thought I was being bullied or she heard someone say something, she would summon me to her office and be like, are you okay? Did, you, did anything happen? Are you all right? She was wonderful. And she even, um, she offered me a position at the school um, when I was 18 to be an assistant teacher. So, right. and yeah, I ended up becoming an assistant teacher at the school. So. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, what child don't want to, what parent don't want a child to make their own opportunities? Like, it's, just, it's great. Okay. So you mentioned what was most difficult for you. Is there anything that's difficult now about learning the language? It's something you still, or not learning, but using it. Just something you still struggle with overall. Sorry, Ms. Pito. Um, Anything that's difficult now learning the language? Mm hmm Are you still kind of get tripped up on all over? Mm, I would say nothing in regards to like, it's being still being difficult. It's just, I feel like Korean is a language that you just never stop learning. There's just always something new, always something coming up. One thing is there's constantly old Korean words that they just never end. Like there's just always, more to learn. And then slang and new words in Korean are literally being invented, I mean, every week. Like, it's it's ridiculous. So the slang I speak is like, probably like four years old back when I was living in Korea. And it's like so crazy to hear Korean people now when they're speaking and I'm just like, wait, like, what was that word you just said? Like, and they're like, oh, it's like a new word. And I'm like, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> Yeah. I was sick with my slang for four years ago. That's yeah, it. I'm just like, you do not need to have a new, like, new vocabulary every two weeks. Like, no. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, and I, I guess that's language in general, especially. I don't even worry about Spanish slang. I need to do better. I don't know Spanish curse words. I know about two Spanish curse words. I know probably two slang words. I don't, I don't even think I know slang. And I don't worry about it. I just worry about the formal speech. But, so I, but on the part of 
even with the old original words, there's always something new to learn. I agree completely. And that's why I, I tell people for my personal, uh, how I operate and then especially when I teach, look, baby, it's always going to be something to learn new. So don't worry about what you don't know because you'll forever be like, this is a journey. This is this is a commitment. It's a marriage. Well, now people get divorced from marriage, so it's not a marriage, but it's a commitment. <laughs> so I get it. Always. Because even in English, you know, there are a plethora of English words we don't know because we don't use oh, yeah. them. Right. So, oh, yeah. yeah, same thing. I can I can, I can connect with you on that. Mm-hmm. Um, You already, to my opinion, told us this. But if there's anything else you want to add, how has learning Korean benefited you personally, professionally or in any other way? Um, It's definitely helped me with. Uh, getting jobs with standing out in the uh, in the international market because I've been living abroad for nine years. I I left the U.S. when I was eighteen to move to Korea, and I haven't lived in the U.S. ever since. So, um, for me, like having Korean on my resume whenever I was applying for jobs before um, has always made me stand out. It's always made me get that phone call or that email where they're just like, you speak Korean? And so I, I've always really, really liked that. Um, it helped me get um, you know, a job in Spain when I was graduating from school in France. And they literally you know, reached out to me because, because I could speak Korean and English. And they were just like, we wanna be able to like have hands in the different markets, so we want you. Um, it helped me also get internships in France. So yeah, I mean, Korean has really helped me. I, people always are wondering, like, is Korean really a useful language? But if you can speak a language, especially that's more so kind of rare or that you don't look like that you speak, yeah, it's kind of really beneficial. It really yeah. can. So. It's, and so I mean, you already handed on two other places you've been in. And do I have it wrong? Are you currently in Poland? That's why I told myself. Yes, I currently live in Warsaw, Poland. Worldwide, Nathan. Yes, <laughs> international, Nathan. Okay. Um, so you you mentioned uh, graduating from from France. So you went to college there. I went to college uh, in Korea, and I also went to college in France. Okay, in France, was were they teaching you in French, or how'd that go? Yeah, um, I was taught in English and in French. Do you speak French too? Yeah, it's like French. Oh, I'll come with the hall. Let me see what I got. Let me see. <laughs> Parlez-vous français? Oui, je parle français, oui. That's all I got. <laughs> I thought, I, I think I used to know how to say my name. Oh, oh, let me give you some numbers. Here we go. U, do, tre. Is that un, right? Deux, trois. Un, un, deux, trois. Un, deux, trois. That's all I got. Because I went to Paris for about three or four days. This is when I was living in Spain. And I bought a book in Spanish to teach you French. So oh. I said, okay, I'm going to do this. And I had it was a nice little book for travel. So mm-hmm. I'm taking notes. And I think I still have the notebook, actually. Taking notes. I'm carrying the book around with me. I'm, I get it off the, you know, off the plane. I get on the subway to get into the city. Like the first dude... I talk, end up talking to, I'm trying, I'm really trying to speak like, oh my, oh my. He said, just speak English. I said, oh, I sh- what I bought this book for? Trash, you know? Because <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I knew I wasn't there to learn. If I was really there for, you know, study abroad, extended period of time, mm-hmm. you know, I, I need to immerse myself. But three days? Oh, <laughs> never mind. I'm, I'm not worried about it. But that's, <laughs> that's the reason I even know that those four little things, which probably weren't that good. But anyway, <laughs> Well, that's wonderful. So you speak uh, French, English, Korean. Do you speak Polish as well? No, no. No I Polish. Know, very basic things, just like my Spanish. Very basic. Um, yeah. Dzień dobry. Yes, and, and this is going to sound so bad. Um, what countries are, are, are Poland or what countries are Poland next to? Poland is next to which countries? Uh we have Germany on the west. Okay. So Germany is right next to Poland. And then on the east of Poland is a country called Belarus. Mm, and okay. then underneath Poland is uh, Czech Republic. Okay. From um, Slovakia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these areas. Okay. And then next to Poland is Ukraine as well. 
Okay. Yeah, I don't know much about Poland. From um, only thing I know is a large number of Polish people are in Chicago because I have family yeah. from there. I think that's where they actually have a Polish consulate, if I'm not mistaken. And um, rules and everything. Mm-hmm. That's all I know about. And then the, I don't know if it's really Polish, but like Polish sausage. I don't know if that's really Polish though. Probably. But, yeah, <laughs> I have no idea. Okay, all right. This is so nice. This is such a oh, I mean, every interview is great, but you're definitely packing <laughs> on the the level of interest. Okay. Um. Oh, but okay. We're gonna go on a transition to your business. I'm not gonna really worry about the rest of these, but before we transition into smarter Korean, you know, they say uh, melanated folks are everywhere. You know, we're indigenous to everywhere. Are there? Is there an indigenous group of, of, of melanated Koreans or is there a large number of, of melanated folks who have immigrated? You know, how was your experience? How often did you see yourself when you live there? Um, in Seoul, the capital of South Korea, there is a district that anybody who's watching this um, who knows probably anything about Korea, they probably know Itaewon. Itaewon is, Itaewon. Also, yeah, Itaewon is also known as the foreign district of Seoul. So this originally, now it's being gentrified um, uh, by Koreans themselves, but um, it originally was a very, um, you know, kind of more rustic, rough around the edges, foreign area. You had um, a lot of African immigrants living in this area, um, a lot of Middle Eastern immigrants living in this area. And so when I was living in Korea, that's where I had to go to get my hair cut. Um, and that is like the area that um, a lot of the U.S. Army soldiers would go to for partying and also get to, I don't know, sometimes go shopping and get their own haircuts if they're not doing it on the base. So, yeah, that was where I would see other Black people. But is there a huge population of, uh, as I like to say, melanin gifted people in Korea? Not so much. Korea is 98, maybe, maybe a little bit less, 97% Korean, um, like uh, yeah, homogeneous, you know, Korean people. So um, nowadays, there's a lot more mixed half black, half Korean kids popping up that I never really saw before when I was living in Korea. So there's that. But in, in yeah, there's not a huge population at all. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I, I wouldn't, I didn't think so in my head, but like I said, I've, I've, had, I've learned we're everywhere in some form. So I had to ask. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So now let's get into Smarter Korean. When did you decide, probably at 16, how your mind worked, when did you decide I'm going to take this skill and make it into a business? So I never actually thought I would be a Korean teacher, even though I was majoring in Korean literature at my university in Korea. Um, I never thought I would actually become a Korean teacher. Um, it ended up happening uh, when I was, well, how did it start? I was visiting my family back in Los Angeles about a more, more or less a year ago. And I was just really stuck. I was trying to figure out what can I do that really aligns with me, my passions and would allow me to travel. Um, Cause I, I love traveling as you can see. And suddenly I was like, why don't I, teach Korean but I had a lot of doubts because I was like who's gonna want to learn Korean from a black guy like <laughs> like I was that was my first thought I was like why would black, people, black people <laughs> black people and so I went online I went on YouTube and I was like I typed in like some Korean videos and I started seeing that there's different uh Caucasian Americans teaching Korean on YouTube yeah. and yeah. I was like wait a minute so I started looking at the comments, started looking at the likes, and I was like, oh, okay. So then I was like, there's a market for this. There's nobody that looks like me yeah. that's in Korean. And then I really was thinking, wow, I remember when I was 14 learning Korean, it would have been amazing to, to see someone who looked like me. Yeah. So I was like, let's do this. And I, within two weeks, created my site. I asked a bunch of people, like, what do you think about learning Korean? And I got a really good response, especially from black people living in Korea. And I put up the site and within two weeks, or no, actually within one week, I had students and took off and I was like, wow, okay. And 
then suddenly I was like, wow, I can, I really see that this, this is my passion, teaching Korean mm. to others that look like me or who are just, you know, um, people of color, as, however we're gonna put it, people who just don't really see their representation in the Korean language learning world yeah. um, because it is very, you don't see a lot of brown folks or anyone else who are not- like I mentioned either. earlier, homogenous. It's a homogenous yeah. culture. It is, it is. And also a lot of the teachers that you do see or a lot of the big stuff you do see in the media, it is predominantly more um, white people as well that are kind of doing the Korean stuff. So I was like, let's do this for, for our people. So. For the cultures, they say. For the culture. Okay. This is so nice. This is so nice. So you've been in existence since 2019. Do I have that right? You said last yeah, year. Been my, I just had our first year for Smarter Korean um, a few months ago. So yeah, it's been one year. What do you think resulted in your big boom? You said within a week you had students and blah, blah, yeah. blah. What, what do you think made people so attracted to your business? Was it a marketing um, tactic or just something organic? What, what? What is it? Originally, I didn't have any type of target market. I didn't have any, you know, real idea of where exactly I wanted to take Smarter Korean. But I quickly saw that um, Black women specifically really um, gravitate towards Smarter Korean. Um, they, we, are my classes aren't just Korean. We talk a lot about the different struggles that Black people face when they're either living in Korea, um, learning Korean. Um, a lot of people want to come to me for my classes to learn Korean and also to have a space that they can talk with me since mm -hmm. I have more experience with Korean people and really know Korean culture really well. Um, they ask me like, what about the situation? Or what do I do when this happens? Or this happened to me like last week when I was in Korea, I don't know how I feel about this. So sometimes it's honestly like a Korean language lesson, some therapy. life cooking lessons, therapy, <laughs> it's like all in one. Um, because my Korean experience is very different from a lot of other people because when I was in Korea, I was in, a, I didn't really speak English for about two years. I was in a Korean university that was the first black person in that school as well. Wow. And I was only in with Korean people for a long amount of time. So I have a very different understanding of Korean culture, so. Yeah. Okay. This is not about your business, but I want to ask you before I forget. Now, why are you in Poland currently? I'm asking myself the same question every day. <laughs> I don't know why I'm here anymore. Um, no, um, I originally came here um, because I'm really adventurous and I just wanted to see what it's like to be kind of more in Eastern Europe because I, I fell in love with this part of the world and their, their Slavic languages. Um, but now it's been two years and I'm kind of like, it's time to move on and let's see go. So, yeah. <laughs> Goodness. Um, let's see. I want to go back to Smarter Korean. Um, what were there any challenges? Because you did give a, a great intro into the success and, and it didn't take long to start the business. But if there have been any roadblocks or hiccups, what have those things been in starting this business in general? Not so much because it's a Korean business, but in starting the business, period. Um, I would say, hmm, well, first off was, yeah, imposter syndrome. <laughs> was the oh, beginning. yes. Yeah. All the time. Well, not all the time, but I had it enough to know. You know, just like, is, am I really doing this? Or is this really for me? Or can I do this? That that was that was a big thing. And still, you know, it definitely comes up. I'm I'm a baby, baby business one year. Um, and there's so much I want to do with Smarter Korean. Um, but besides that, I would say um, just just navigating, understanding that not, you know, not every student is is going to be a match. And also, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you get clients and they make their complaints and they're like, I'm leaving. And you're like, oh, yay. I've been waiting on you to go. Now, hey, don't. I don't want nobody to not join my class. You go, you can, I'll teach you. But that's just, that's life. Everybody comes yeah, in. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Their own expectations and all of that. And so sometimes they're ready to go and you're ready for them to leave. Not like, every client is going to be a match. Yeah. Um, and also just learning that, um, learning how to serve my people in the sense of, when I say my people, I mean people that really align with 
my uh, message for Smarter Korean, with my goals for Smarter Korean, um, with people who are basically um, self-motivated, self -motivated, dedicated, um, professional learners that are really, really wanting to learn Korean, not just learning Korean, you know, for a week or two weeks. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. I, hate, I mean, I don't know if this is what this is what I connected with it. I'm not saying this is what you're saying, but like when I give a, 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 a client some homework, and they didn't do it, which is fine. I, it's not what well, it's not fine. I get that life happens, but consistently, oh, I didn't do it. I didn't get around to it. Now, wait a minute. How you going to learn? Because the thing is, especially with Spanish, but like I said, it's a substantial population here. But either way, you're not around Spanish speakers every day. So if I'm giving you something, I say do it a little bit every day. You got you have to get a little bit of Espanol in your life daily. daily. To even, you know, get, to even, 30 minutes. I'm not saying it's got to be Finish all day, every day. Yes. A little something, but oh, oh, I didn't get to. Okay, you know what? But I'm, <laughs> and, and at that point, I just have to say, okay, you know, it's, you kind of delaying yourself. I'm not gonna get rid of a client for that, but I need them to get. Hey, well, you're you're just hurting yourself. So I got exactly. you exactly daily. I'm I'm like you know I'm always trying to teach my students how to implement oh, Korean in their life yeah. on a daily basis because it's not about like you know like it's like you said earlier it's not a race or so like you know. It's just putting it into your life so it becomes part of you. So. Yeah, yeah. Because even you mentioned, and I know it's the truth for me. I I stunk in Spanish for several years before I got it. But you even mentioned even being in an immersed environment on weekends. It took you a year, a minimum, you said, to to mm -hmm. start speaking confidently. So yeah. of course, when you don't have it that often, it's gonna take a little longer. But yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. not a race, not at all, not at all. Oh yeah. Um. Oh, if I read your website correctly, and if I rem remember correctly you also i believe teach people how to start businesses as well is that right yeah um i also teach people how to start language um teaching businesses so um originally before i started smarter korean i was an online english teacher and that was rough <laughs> <laughs> it, was <rough. laughs> it was good money for a little while but it was rough after a while so yeah okay. um i teach people how to transition from that to creating their own teaching business. Yeah, so um, whether you wanna teach French or German or Chinese, um, I was recently working with a client who, um, she's a German speaker, she's um, she's black from the East Coast. And yeah, she wanted to create her own German courses. So I was like, all right, let's, let's do this, so. Right. that is beautiful. Well. I think I'm gonna go on and wrap it up. Is there any before? But before we end, because we're gonna end with your English introduction. Because oh, you know what? Stop, stop the presses. I want you to teach me and the viewers something. Like you already taught me. Oh my goodness, Udi, do I have that Udi. right? Udi, mm -hmm. which is our us we. Our us and we. Uh huh. But then the other word was the same as well, which is informal or versus formal. I said choy or something. Choy, choy. Choy, choy is the formal. Uh, we, us, our, Uri mm -hmm. is a bit less formal. Uri, Uri. Okay, so I guess just teach me how to say my name is Tasha. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. my, Che, Che, Irum, Iru, Irum, Irum. Good. Irum. Wait a minute. Che, Irum, 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 Irum. Un, un. Irum, un. <laughs> so, Irumun, Irumun. Irumun. Tasha. Che, Irumun, Tasha. Yeyo. Why am I saying that? Yeyo. Yeyo. Yeyo is the, uh, uh, Che, Irumun, Tasha, Yeyo. My name is, so is, is at the end of the sentence. I guess why you say everything's backwards and flipped around. Exactly. I've heard Yeah Yo and think it's, it's rap songs. That's the Yeah Yo I know, but okay. I don't know. <laughs> but okay. So let me try it again. Che Irum Nun Irumun Irumun Tasha Yeah Yo. Yes, good. <laughs> okay. Give me see something. I hope y'all caught that viewer. So try that, try that, you know, on your time. Rewind this to try it. Um, what's another basic thing you think a person should know in Korean? Uh, I say their name. Ne. Ne means yes. Ne. 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 Well, that's opposite too, cause it sounds like no. 
Like, <laughs> Nick, Nick. Hey. what about some numbers? Can you tell me some numbers? Like one to 10. Korean has two sets of numbers. Uh, there's a set of numbers used for time and a set of numbers used for counting. What? Yeah. Give me the ones for counting. Uh, Hana. Hana. Two. True. Two. 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 So like D O O L or D U L. Two. Dul. Dul. Good. Let's nice. start it back at one. Sorry. Hana. Hana. Two. Dul. Set. Set. Ned. Ned with an N. Uh, with a T at the end. Set. Oh, wait, where, am I? where are we on three or four? Oh. When you say <laughs> <laughs> Hana Dul Set. 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 Net. Net. Tazo. Talo. Tazo. Tazo. Ta thought. Ta thought. Oh, that's probably my list. <laughs> Ta thought. <laughs> Can you give me the pronunciation breakdown with English letters? T A H. -ta. I hear the ta. What else? Ta zo. Uh, like T -h -z. Uh, D T. So D A. <laughs> ta and then S E U T. S E U T. Suit. S -u -t. Oh, no, I, so, I need to get in your class. That's what this teacher me. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you, may, you may have a, let me get out of regular school. You may have a client in a year. Okay, so right. we're off to, over five. I'm over that. Six. That's probably one I can say. Your thought. Your thought. Okay. Here you go. Here you go. Your daughter. I know that last little sound. Your something. Your gonna. Yodoy. 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 Kind of sound like yodel. That's what I hear. Yodoy. Okay. Aho. 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 Yol. Yol. De. Charisaya. That was so difficult. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let so me. I'll play them, them off for you. Let me get my little school out the way and you may have a little client because, woo! <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you. That was great. That was great. But um, so yeah. before we wrap up or as we wrap up, go ahead and let me ask you these same questions in English and you can give your response in English. Um, and, and viewers, I hope you enjoyed it. I've had a great time. Um, and I would say I learned some stuff, but when you learn it, it's going to stick. And whatever I just said is not going to stick. But still, it was nice trying. Where are you from? You are told you're from LA. Los Angeles, yeah. Yes, sir. Um, your job or jobs was my second question. I am a Korean language coach at Smarter Korean, which is my um, online Korean language school. And I am also a business coach helping uh, online language teachers or language teachers in general turn their uh, passion into an online business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Your pastimes. My pastime, so like I said in Korean, um, I don't really have any like hobbies or anything per se. Um, I honestly like reading. Um, I like TV and I love traveling. So okay, sounds peaceful. Sounds peaceful. <laughs> and did you grow up an only child? That is what I also said in Korean earlier. Um, was that I am an only child? Yeah, that's so probably what you got something in Korean earlier. I know I'm not going front like I did. It's just that that spirit, you know. I'm an only child as well, and so when you're used to being alone, you can be alone anywhere in the world. That's so, what I always say. That's I get right. it. Yeah, so no, that's just uh kindred spirits, but no, I'm not gonna <laughs> act like I got that. I was like, Korea. Whoa, you got it from Korea, <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> your so, uh, in addition, other than you being an only child, anything else you said about your family. Oh, I just said that it's my, just me, my my parents, my parents, and um, they're everyone's back home in Los Angeles. So. Do you ever miss them? Or do they ever miss you? Like, come back. Or are they like, fly? What do they tell you? They, for a while, I'd say the first four or five years, they were just like, come back, come back. Or we know you're going to come back. We know you're going to come back. <laughs> now it's been nine years. They're just like, okay, no. You're, 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 you're not coming back. We have to come to you now. So, yeah. That's nice. That's nice. Okay. 
your fa the last question, your favorite Korean song or singer. Kim something. That's all I got. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I I think I said I don't really have a particular favorite um Korean song, but I do have a favorite Korean artist and he is Kim Bong Su. Kim Bong Su. Kim Bong Su. Kim Bong Su. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I have to Google him. All right. Well, this has been great. I appreciate you. Um, how should everybody follow you if they want to connect with Smarter Korean? What social media do you need to throw out there? Oops. Yes. Um, if you're looking to learn Korean, if you want to learn how to truly speak Korean with confidence and understand the mindset of language learning, especially Korean, um, please check me out at smarterkorean.com. You can also follow the Smarter Korean Facebook page as well as the Smarter Korean online Instagram. So if you're looking to um, have any type of representation in your Korean language classes, reach out to me and I'm here. All right, well, muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much again to Nathan viewers. I hope you've had a good time and I hope your mind and your eyes and your ears are open and awakened even more to realize that we are everywhere, we're in everything. And if, if Nathan can do it, you can do it with any language. It's, it's, we're here, we're in everything, we're everywhere. All right, have a good night viewers and have a good night, Nathan. Thank you so much. Bye, thank you for having me. Oh, yes, sir.